Hello everyone and welcome to Basic Biology. Today we will be talking about DNA replication and protein synthesis. Okay, so what many of you may be thinking is, that's great Noah, but what is even DNA? Well, I've got the answer. So basically, DNA, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid, is a kind of nucleic acid that is found in the nucleus. In the nucleus, DNA is found clumped together to make chromosomes. And each section of the chromosome that dictates a certain trait is called a gene. The function of DNA is to store genetic information that is used to make the proteins inside you. DNA is in the structure of a double helix and is made up of nucleotides. Each nucleotide has a sugar phosphate backbone and a nitrogenous base. There are four different nitrogenous bases, which are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, or A, T, G, and C. Uh, so each base pairs with another base. A pairs with T, and G pairs with C. All of this forms the double helix, which has two strands. Each strand goes in the opposite direction, which is from a five prime end or a three prime end. For the left strand, it goes from five prime to three prime, which looks like it's going down. For the right strand, it also goes from five prime to three prime, but this time it makes it look like it's going up. This makes the strands anti-parallel strands, which means that they run parallel to each other, but not in opposite directions. Okay, so now that we've talked about what DNA is, let's talk about DNA replication. DNA replication is a process in which DNA is made from one section into two copies. The reason for DNA replication is because of mitosis. During mitosis, two cells are created, so each cell needs its own copy of DNA. This is where DNA replication comes in. DNA replication begins with the parental DNA. This is the DNA that will be copied. First, the enzyme helicase goes to the middle of the two strands, unzipping them into single strands. This results in a replication fork and a replication bubble. The replication fork is where the two strands separate from each other at the, at the origin of replication, like how in, how in that Fast and Furious movie, Vin Diesel and that other guy, they drove away from each other. It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. And the replication bubble is the open area between the two separated strands. Now that we have two separate strands, there is a leading strand and a le lagging strand. The leading strand is a strand that is on top and that goes from five prime to three prime up. The lagging strand is the strand that go is on the bottom and that goes from five prime to three prime down. Another thing that comes with the separation of the two strands, strands is the binding of a single-stranded DNA binding protein. These proteins help keep the single strands of DNA in place so they can be used as a template for the synthesis of DNA and do not become a double helix. Next, an enzyme called DNA primase binds an RNA primer to the leading strand at the three prime end. RNA primers are strands of RNA that serve as the starting point for DNA synthesis. Also, synthesis starts with the leading strand since it is the easiest to replicate. After that, another enzyme called DNA polymerase comes in, comes in and starts making the new strand in the opposite direction of the leading strand by adding the complementary base pairs. Since replication occurs from 5' prime to 3', prime, synthesis on the leading strand is continuous. Once the pair for the leading strand is finished, it is time to start on the lagging strand. Since the lagging strand goes in the opposite direction, multiple primers have to be used and the synthesis, therefore, is not continuous. These primers are many bases apart and DNA polymerase fills these bases with DNA. These pieces of DNA in between primers are called Okazaki fragments. Going back to synthesis, since it is not continuous, these fragments are disjointed, which means they're not actually connected to the primers. Once both the strands are completed, an enzyme called exonuclease removes all of the RNA primers from the strands, which are then replaced with appropriate DNA nucleotides. After this, DNA polymerase checks to see if there are any mistakes in the DNA, and such as mutations or base errors. If there are mistakes, then there is a DNA repair mechanism called nucleotide excision repair that fixes any bases that are incorrect or damaged. Next, DNA ligase comes in and connects the Okazaki fragments to the rest of the strand, making it a whole strand. Before each old strand can pair with each new strand, we first need to talk about telomeres. Telomeres are repeated DNA sequences 
that serve as a protective cap at the end of chromosomes to prevent other chromosomes nearby from fusing. Also, an enzyme called telomerase helps catalyze the synthesis for these telomeres. Once all the strands are complete, they bind together to form two new double helixes. These are considered to be the daughter DNA since they came from the parent DNA. This is the end of the process of DNA replication. You know, I'm getting pretty tired, so I think I'm going to go ahead and give it to my co-host, Naomi. Thanks, Noah. Knowing that DNA is responsible for coding for the proteins in our body and how DNA replication occurs, we will now be explaining how exactly proteins are made. This process is called protein synthesis. Protein synthesis is comprised of two main parts, transcription and translation. The first step of protein synthesis is transcription, where DNA is converted to mRNA. This takes place in the nucleus. As we have stated before, DNA is structured as a double helix with two parallel strands. RNA is just DNA, but with only one strand. There are three types of ribonucleic acids, messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, and transfer RNA. To create RNA, a strand of DNA is used as a template. To initiate the process of creating RNA, an enzyme called RNA polymerase goes down the DNA strand and copies a sequence into RNA language, starting at a point called the promoter region. RNA language is just the four main nucleotides, A, T, G, and C, but instead of T, there is U. The strand elongates until it reaches the termination signal, telling the enzyme to stop. Once a strand is transcribed, a specially altered nucleotide is added to the 5' prime end of the strand, and it's called the 5 cap, and a poly A tail is added to the 3' prime end, which adds a long string of adenine. Proteins are created in the ribosomes, located in the cytoplasm, which is nowhere near the nucleus, where DNA is. To start the process of translation, mRNA, perfectly called messenger RNA, crosses the nuclear membrane, and a ribosome attaches to a part of the strand called the start codon. Ribosomes consist of two subunits, a large one and a small one. They are made of a mix of protein and rRNA, and they attach to either side of the strand. An amino acid tRNA also binds to the strand at different sites called the A site, the P site, and the E site. This step of translation is called initiation. The, step, the next step is elongation, which is when the mRNA's codon code for amino acids based on the tRNA's anticodons, and the tRNA brings the corresponding amino acid. No! Ribosome then moves up to the next mRNA codon to continue the process, creating an amino acid chain. This is called a polypeptide, which is bonded together with peptide bonds made by the ribosome. This process is catalyzed by the enzyme peptidyl transferase. Next is termination. When the stop codon reaches completion, the amino acid chain is released. It then forms a protein. Okay, we're done. Hello, my name is Big Pungus.